Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for more treasure hunting. Doing things a little bit out of order this morning because I'm waiting for the previous Penguin Drum episode to upload on BitChute, which takes forever. Uh, and I'm up really freaking early. Speaking of which, ah. Uh, mm, require caffeine. That's not how you say that. Caffeine. We're gonna be a little off for the first few minutes of this one. That'll be fine. Uh, we are watching number 24, the new sports show of the season that isn't Haikyuu. Poor number 24 is going up against the well-established and very popular show with also pretty boys playing also cool sports uh, called Haikyuu. You might have heard of it. Um, this is a rugby show. It looks like a Bishonen show. The The main cast essentially looks like a, a classic K-pop or, or J-pop boy band put in rugby uniforms uh, with very colorful hair and colorful hair gradients that may or may not look really good in practice. They look okay on the cover, but we'll see. Um, interestingly... In terms of staff, there are some there are some interesting people working on this. Uh, the the least interesting person I could find on the staff list was probably Shigeru Kamiya, who is directing. Uh, he has directed three shows that I can find in two thousand three, two thousand six, and two thousand ten. None of which I've heard of. None of which are, are, are well reviewed. All of which kind of look kind of weird. Um, yeah. Uh, the script writer, however, is Rika Nakase, who did the script for Higurashi, the the script or composition or whatever for Ice Shield 21 and the script for Bleach, as well as Princess Tutu, which is a really interesting range of shows to be writing for. There's a lot of a lot of different stuff going on there. And the main boy is being played by the same guy who plays uh, Rei of Sangatsu, whose performance I absolutely loved in that. So be listening for him to be really good. Um, that's all I know about the show. It's rugby. Last time we had a, a pretty boys playing rugby show, it was absolutely terrible uh this time hopefully it's a little bit better production stuff and just general posters and things look a lot better put together maybe we'll investigate some of the other staff like the color designers once we get to the end of the episode if we get to the end of the episode but we'll just play it by ear and cross that bridge when we get to it so let's go ahead and and give episode one of number four number 24 a shot and uh Maybe it'll be okay. I assume that the name comes from the number that he'll probably be on the team. Just a guess. Let's find out what the hell this show is all about. So, I've got episode 1 of number 24 up and ready to go. I'm using the Horrible Subs version, which should be the same as the Crunchyroll version or wherever else it's streaming. Um, there will be two versions of this reaction. You can find a picture-in-picture -picture version with the video up there, linked it down there in the description, and a timer-based version up on YouTube. Timer-based version will have discussion at the end. Picture-in-picture-based -picture version will not, so mix and match as you see fit. And if you want to sync up your own copy of the episode with the timer-based version so you can watch the episode, for example, in full glorious 1080p, uh, you can totally do that. Just get your copy ready because the beep beep timer to count you down will be coming right now. Lens flares, lens flares. Lens flares. Lens flares. Oh, Jesus. Well, rip. That was... That was fast. Kind of... Kind of weird and floaty, but okay. Cool. I wonder who the characters are. I see four. <laughs> uh-huh. His name is Nuts. First year college student, repeater, as you would be if you were in the hospital for a while. Hands don't work quite right. Little clickety-clack in there. Is there a white filter over everything? I actually kind of like the hair gradients in this one. I know that's weird for me. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's pretty ugly. I do recognize his voice.
Oh, wow. Big ol' scar. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to try joining the rugby team. And straight into the OP. Oh, it's a Bishonen show. Start us up with some man service. Short pants. Boxer briefs. Abs. Manly men doing manly things. And sparkles lens flares. Cell phones. Strong silent type. Goofy guys. Continuing goofy guys. Oh, guy who doesn't have any of that shit. Lens flares. Holy shit, this guy loves his lens flares. It, oh my god, lens flares. <laughs> oh, that's too much. It's too much. JJ, JJ, when did you start directing anime? Okay. Ah! Uh, manly muscle fights! Teamwork! Lens flares? Waiting for it. Waiting for it. Oh, there's one! <laughs> so we see the manager guy. Can't actually play? They all have 24 on there? Okay. Oh, that actually looks exactly like one of my classrooms in college. Jesus. That that gave me the wibbledies. <laughs> it's weird. Exactly like it. Except uglier. Sure. Why is he wearing uh 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 Karen Araragi's outfit? Oh, hi. I was wrong. There were five characters in, in that shot. Number one left prop. And he sweats a lot. Okay. I guess it's somebody's type. Oof. Ow. You suck, dude. I don't. Uh, it's not like I wanted your advice or anything. Ba -ba 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 Baka. Ba -ba 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 Hello, cute, quiet blue boy. Oh. Okay. Lens flares. There are a lot of lens flares. <laughs> oh, he's he's Ethan Taylor. English. Yeah. Oh, let's fill up the main character. Is this high school or college? Oh, hello. Captain. Of course he is.
his Japanese guy doing an English speaker speaking Japanese accent is a thing. Oh boy. Hey. Don't touch his don't touch his gradients. <laughs> Hands off the gradients. Lens flares. That, that wasn't really a lens flare, that was just glare. Fuck. Stonewalled. Sure. So he is the manager. Gotcha. Sounds like manager stuff. Are we going to turn stretching and icing into a fan service scene? We're not. I'm a little bit surprised. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So flat. <laughs> ah, let him do the thing. He's gonna let him do the thing. He wants to do the thing. Sure. He's just, he's desperate to get back into it. It's pretty simple. But pretty effective, I'd say. Ah. <sighs> This is entirely competent for what it is. I do not give a damn about it. Not even a little bit. You know your shit, right? You have. It's been pretty awkward. Chowing down. Wants to be a 
sports theoristy person -y thingy. Analyst? Analyst. Does he or is he just awkward? Yeah. All right. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Why is everything... Okay. Everything's in focus. Watered, watered it down? You should water it down. You, you shouldn't drink straight Gatorade when you're working out. Hmm. Oh, the redhead guy has his old position. So, gotcha. Cool. Oh my. Oh my. Mm. <laughs> oh, they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> okay. They have a pretty solid din dynamic already. Oh. He got, he got a bad... A bad case of lens flares. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wow. For the first time, we're actually using, using like, focus. <laughs> wow. He was holding his side at, uh, at lunch, too. But if you've got un unexplained abdominal pain, you should probably get that checked out. <clears throat> no, everybody's... A lot of them have been pretty shit to you. I mean, okay. え、マジですかえ、え、マジですか。Oh, you're a pro. さすがですね。勉強になります。<laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, and to get him to go to the okay. Malnutrition and stress, probably. Maybe eat better and, like, chillax a little.
Reckless idealism. Yeah. Love the shit that you love. I'm I'm into it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's get you some nutrition. Nice. Great. Neko ramen. Neko udon. Oh, he's just been standing there this whole time, staring at you? Okay. Ah, we're almost at the end. Woo! <sighs> Blair. Move into the dorms. Cool. Ah. My man. <laughs> My man's. <laughs> oh, all right. Sure. Sure, yeah, good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just just cycling through them <laughs> nice that was a really solid gag okay okay there's some good things going on here Eh, lunch players. <laughs> nope. Oh, geez, man. Yeah, it's college, okay. Lens flares. <laughs> oh, ED. No after credit scene.
Really nice voice. Where do I know that voice from? Lens flares. <laughs> Who's doing the ED? Oh, it's it's the the two main characters. Ryota Suzuki doing the first voice, I think. And then a card. <laughs> we won't really do much rugby. I get that. I get the impression that's going to be the case for most of the show. Um, okay, one sec. I want to know who the... Oh, a director of photography. Art director is named Scott McDonald. Now that's a name you wouldn't expect. Character design and chief animation director is by Saori Sakiguchi, and Kanayuki is the mangaka who... No, sorry. Wait, what? Is this an original? It's an original! Oh, I totally thought this was a manga. Um, original character design did Isekai Omo Tenashi Gohan. Which has an art style that actually kind of looks like Sangatsui on the cover. And lots of food and okay i'm gonna just bookmark that so that i can maybe read it later because that looks really fucking cute uh all right director of photography has never done anything else on anything ever okay uh uh, uh art director is scott mcdonald background art on fake calliad liner prisma ilia that's interesting and background art on Madoka Magica, of all things. I would, I would not have expected that at all, um, just given how utterly disparate these are. But yeah, we've got a, a British artist working as a, a, a background artist and art director now. That's pretty cool. Also worked on Vivid Strike and some other stuff. That's pretty cool. And then character design and CAD has never worked on anything else ever. Okay, so one of the things that I've been uh, that I am trying to do when I go through these shows is is ask a question, a specific question. It's really a compound question. It's got got two questions in it, but one of them is corollary to the other. And that question, I have it written like handwritten on a little note that I have taped to the top of my computer screen, and it is. What was the goal of this first episode, and how well did we obtain that? How, how, how well did we meet that goal? The goal in a first episode of a, of a show like this, and I say a show like this because I have seen shows like this. There are a lot of shows like this. This is pretty clearly a shonen sports show. The target audience is pretty clearly not the shonen audience. It's more the shoujo audience. And, oh, that's not actually how this works, is it? What's the word for... Fujoshi? Eh, that's a little bit harsh. I don't, I don't think that that's accurate. I don't think that's apt. It's about cute boys doing, doing sweaty things together. With some heart. Honestly, I kind of like the hearty bits. They're, they're kind of nice. There's a pretty strong setup here, story-wise, with a character who can't do the thing that he loves... Uh, still trying to assist in doing the thing that he loves. So I would say that the main narrative and thematic thrust of this first episode, besides the thrust, A, is do what you love despite hardship. Work toward it. And I, I really dig that as a message. I, I, it agrees with a lot of my principles. It's, it's solid. It's easy to, 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 to get behind. Man, we are just getting, getting euphemistic in this one. Um, 
it's easy to get behind and and it works pretty well purpose of the episode introduce us to the world introduce us to the burgeoningly large cast of characters uh in part in the hopes that you fall for one of them there are there are shades of run with the wind here um i'm not as well done not nearly as well done and it doesn't have an oomph moment it doesn't have a a, a wow moment which i think i think an episode one of a sports show like this really needs but this isn't really a sports show. This is a manager show. This is a pursuing your dreams despite hardship show. This is a, a friendship and camaraderie show. The focus is very not on the rugby itself. The focus so far is on the characters who do the rugby and how they interact and how they exist. And so that's why I say it reminds me a bit of Run With The Wind. Running is a thing that they all do together and the almost the cute guys doing cute things excuse for having these characters do things together and get to know each other and figure out each other's struggles we have little mini setups for all of the the characters and their characterization i would say that those were done pretty damn well um from a, a script perspective like what can this character say in an extremely limited amount of time because we have a lot to get through that will give us a clear indication of who this character is and how they might evolve and how their relationship with our main character and with the other characters in the cast might evolve as we move forward We've got the the English boy. We've got the 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 redhead guy with the mole who is uh, apparently taking his position, right, and has some kind of beef there, um, or feels guilty or whatever. We've got the blonde kid who seems younger than they are, who uh, uh, doesn't like being called his name, and there's obviously a story behind that. Characters are introduced in a really efficient and and like I think pretty well done way. And the, the themes and, and setup for what is to come are introduced in a pretty well done way. Character designs, they're okay. They're they're all right. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel anything much toward them. I will say that I surprisingly like the gradient hair. Uh usually I am not a fan of, of gradients in hair. Something about the 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 band of of light in in the sort of lucky star-ish style although lucky stars are very different um but i think you know what i mean like it's a classic anime hair aesthetic something about using that as the specific transition point for the the not super duper ultra in your face but still very noticeable gradient over their hair colors is is it works it's it's all right the the facial designs themselves are pretty simple pretty straightforward but they're consistent and on model, and they look okay. Um, even some of the sequences where where the shading has been changed because it's sunset or it's getting late at night or whatever. There's a later at night sequence somewhere here. Yeah, uh, they they look they look pretty good. They're pretty consistent, which is important. Where looking pretty good is is an important part of your show. Um, now. We get a little taste of the man service as these two characters. Uh, what's interesting here is is where we gaze. I think for me, it's interesting gaze at, at the neck, show off his muscly neck, right? Uh, and then we get real close up to his face as he gets real close to us. But he goes through the camera, giving us the impression he's getting closer than he really is. We hold on their shadow romantically. Cut to ultra close up of the eye gazing. Lo longingly at at his workout partner there's a thing going on here and it's pretty obvious but it's also kind of different than your classic like anime female focused male gazy fan service it's a little bit a little bit different it's kind of interesting i'm not going to dig too deep into it but it's kind of interesting um overall direction is a little weird uh i'd say that the flow and pace of scenes is fine there's a lot to cover in this episode because of the way that they decided to introduce all these characters um and i think the the flow and pace of it all is pretty okay uh the the wide shots in the beginning kind of give us an establishment of of where they're at and that they're walking to school together and stuff like that we enter the club and immediately are greeted with muscly boys because duh gotta gotta do that we get we get like straight up muscly boy right wait 
Where's the shot? I was just on it. There. Straight up muscly boy and shy, nerdy muscly boy, but they're all muscly boys because they're all athletes. Fuck yeah. Sparkles, characters. It it looks like an idol group or a boy band playing playing the games. Playing the, the rugby's. Also, lens flares. We gotta talk about lens flares really quick. Uh, there are way too many of them in this episode. Um, way too many. The, the DP has never worked on anything else, right? Was that, was that one of the ones that's never worked on anything else? Atsushi Kano? Yeah, has, has never worked on anything else. That's listed on Mal, at least. Um, it shows. It shows a little bit. There, there, there are a few things that are weird here. The lens flares and use of glare in the backgrounds and to, to, to create a fake sense of depth in, the, in a lot of the outdoor shots is um, it's a band-aid measure and it shows a little bit of, of offness. Let me see. Where's the scene where we have the female manager yelling at us? Where's that? Where's that? Because that, that's a really solid place to be for it. Oh, we're using we're using a little bit of blur there. There should be more of this. Um, one of the ways that you can create depth is to to create artificial focus, right? You you blur out the background a little bit so that you, you're simulating the effect of your eyes being focused on a close object or a closer object, and everything else being a little bit blurry. Same thing happens with a camera lens. What's weird is there are a bunch of sequences where everything is in, is in focus and it it removes the sense of depth and reality from the sequences. Where is that scene? There it is. Okay. So these trees while they're not super detailed are in focus. The clouds in the sky are in focus. The bags on the ground are in focus. All of the the turf and the the track is in the same level of weird digital shit this fence in the background is in focus it should be a blur the trees should be a bit of a blur our focus should either be right here or right here and probably right here so maybe he should be out of focus as well it just it lacks depth and we could we could hold here have our focus on her and then shift it so that we come to focus on him as he begins to run forward that would be one easy fix for this. Same situation. Everything in the same level of weird digitalness with a little bit of angel rays or or glariness coming off over here. Now, that said, this show, for me, doesn't verge into the territory of like... Oh, shit. I've, I've straight up forgotten what it's called. It was the, the police show from from... I think last season, where it was not only glary and lens flary, but the color design itself was was bad and ugly and actually painful to look at. This never gets painful to look at. It's just a little bit funny to notice all of the the little band-aid measures. And then that coupled with the relatively flat direction that's like we almost always shoot characters straight on or profile, uh and never really get creative never really get more creative with the the composition of of various frames than we do in uh in the 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 sexy workout sequence but for an original which is to say that there's no no manga paneling to go off of this was all storyboarded who did the storyboards it's not listed I would assume it's the director because he's got a lot of experience with storyboarding other shows. So I would assume it's the director. But I don't know. Um, so they're working off storyboards. That can give you a lot more creativity or a lot less time. So does that make sense? Because as a mangaka, you can spend a lot more time figuring out your paneling than if you're on a production schedule and have to just rip through storyboards all in all i think the show accomplished its goals we need to be endeared to the main character and his and his purpose or his uh his drive and i think he does a pretty good job of that there's also a really solid gag in the episode i think um 
where he explains that the way to deal with your your seniors is to say these three phrases and then later does exactly that when they're kind of giving him shit for something it's pretty great it's it it works perfectly and it functions as a solid setup payoff for the episode and the gag, even if that hadn't happened, it would have been a, a nice little gag anyway, because he tells him the fourth thing, which is, you know, if your seniors ask you to go somewhere, you say, yes, I am with you. So he sets up this rule of threes and then uses it to force him to cut, come to the hospital with him. It's it's pretty solid. I, I quite like that as a little scripty thingy. All in all, this is definitely not a show that I'm going to watch more of because it's not my kind of show. But there's a lot that you could like in this one. Uh... I, I know some people who are definitely going to be watching this. Let's put it that way. And no shame on them. It's it's fine. It's fine. The backgrounds are pretty shit. <laughs> They're detailed, but fucking ugly ass digital backgrounds, yo. What? 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 All right. This is this is a lot better than I expected. A lot better than I expected. Still not my thing though. So I'll give it a solid, if you like this type of show, you're going to like this one because it is exactly that. If you don't like this type of show, you're not going to like this one because it is exactly that. You pretty much get what you, you see on the box. It's got some solid voice acting. Uh, the script is pretty well done at this point. And uh, cute boys doing cute things. Great. Cool. I'm done. Me too, boo. This number 24. It's better than expected, but still just all right. Peace.